Okay. It's on. Don't say anything dirty. I won't. I won't say anything dirty. I guess Paul, is that Boston Paul? I, I doubt it. We're just waiting for sound like we always do. Just waiting for sound. Do you have to slurp, Leonard? Anything else you want to talk about? Am I bugging you today already? A little bit. But we just started. Okay. How could I bug you yet? Because I've been bugging you all morning. Come on, where's the sound? It's coming, but are you just not going to have a conversation with me till then? Not till then, because <laughs> You don't want to talk to me? Whatever. <sighs> there it is. There you go. Okay. Okay. No slurping. Hey, James heard early. No, no slurping, Lenny. <laughs> Danny heard early. Slurping Everybody man, hears What, us. are you kidding me? <laughs> We're the last ones to know. We don't even know when the sound is on. But all I know is I'm on. Are you on? No, today stinks. You've been pissed off since 4 o'clock this morning. I don't right? even know why. I'm just in one of those moods, yeah, you know? Well, Anybody that's a woman that's listening, they not, get it. It's not just one of them. You can't them, help right? it sometimes. Just don't piss me off today. Oh, excuse me. Give me, me. that. You're going to knock it over. Yeah, go ahead. Knock you over. All right, go ahead. Good morning, everybody. It is Sunday morning. It is time for the Lady and the Legend. And all I could say is about that is welcome aboard. Welcome aboard, Chris from Cambridge, Danny from Fuller, Eddie Heckman. Danny and Penny. Danny and Penny. And Eddie Teresa. Heckman, James Capleon is here. Leonard Donaldson, Rotorius. Turd. It turd. It brightens my day when I the see turd. The turd man. Tommy <laughs> Johnston is here. Tommy just keeps us going with everybody. Turd. Letting us know 558 was the sound. Danny Fuller. You are the best, and guest Paul is here. That is the one and the only guest Paul. Daniel's here. Okay. Is so guest Paul Boston Paul? He has to be. There what is he, lazy today? He can't the, sign it. He can't even type his own guest name out? It's either Boston Paul or Pope Paul. I don't know which one it is. But anyway, good morning, everybody, and welcome aboard on a lovely Sunday morning. Yes, it is. It is the lady in the legend... And uh, we'll take you here for so a little while. So there's nothing to talk about, except well, for trade possibilities, no, there a bunch is, of BS rumors. There is something to talk about, and, we're, and we are the only ones talking about it. I don't know. Loud Out might be talking about no, no, baseball. No, they're not talking about what we talk about. We talk about the fact that the information that we get, that we all hone in on, okay, it's advertised on uh, on radio, it's advertised on the articles, and it's all bull dinky and poppycock. And we talk about that. We talk about the fact that the teams don't call the writers and say, all right, here's something that uh, we just discussed. No, the writers have a job to do. I'm not knocking them. And this is a big period, and it's a big time, that I mean, I mean, here's an example, okay? This morning I find out that the Toronto Blue Jays have intensified. Andy, you know what intensified means? Yes, it means it... Uh... You don't know what it means. Okay, uh, the Blue I'm Jays not listening to you. have intensified talks with the Padres for Juan Soto. Now, who, how the hell did they get that? 
And and how the hell are they the only ones to get it? How come every source that's they, How come they never name their source? Because they don't have one. Exactly. How come everybody's not talking about this, if this is a reliable source? And everywhere, yes, yes, yeah, the whole thing. is The Blue Jays now emerge as the favorites to land Soto. Now somebody give me a break, Okay. Nobody else is talking about it except the source. So you talk all that junk about it as if it's not true, and then we go and we talk about it. And does anybody <laughs> think that the Yankees are going to shy away and or the Mets, the Mets and the Yankees every year, historically, are the teams that everybody wonders well, about. Well, look, the and Yankees... now this year, I mean, they're not giving up. Daniel Ferrara is there. Good morning to Danny Ferrara. Go ahead. Um... Tommy Johnson, he says he doesn't see the Blue Jays actually doing that, but anything can happen. And Turd brought up some stuff. He doesn't think that the Blue Jays are going to get Soto. Uh, they, they now have to replace the Yankees since the talks stalled, right? Now you gotta now you got to come up with another team that's going to be all excited to get Soto. Someone's getting Soto. That I'm pretty sure of. Oh, I think the Padres are definitely, they have to... Uh, look, the Padre. You take a look at this Padre team, and you know we've said it before. They have absolutely no pitching. Well, no pitching. They got a pretty decent offense. I mean, Soto's a big time player. There's no doubt about it. I think that they don't even. Yeah. What What are they getting? I'm not saying. You know, look, to say that you don't need Soto, I don't know what that means. Everybody who has a chance to have Soto can absolutely use them and use them well. There's no question. But when you have a team that's, uh, oh, it's a, uh, I mean. Good morning look, to Mal Pal. Mal Pal is in I hope the girls are coming home today. I mean, we're talking about San Diego, and it's Mal Pal's country. You got Cronenworth. You got Kim. You got Bogart. Oh, here's what you got. You got Bogart. You got Machado. You got Fernando Tatis. Now, when you have those three, your offense is. I'll use the words okay, at least okay. We have to okay. say happy birthday to Gene Nelson. He's 61 today. You Thank don't you. really remember him. No, not at all. I wonder if Daniel Farrar remembers him because apparently he was a White Sox for I a while. Yeah, no, he was a minor player. Not even a minor league. He's just a minor player. Well, not but. every day has a birthday of a superstar. Chris from Cambridge does work. He puts it in the chat room, yes, and I does. like to acknowledge it because it's fun for me. And there if it's not go. fun for anyone else, then... Okay. So, anyway, the <laughs> Padres are going to have to J. make R. a trade. Uh, J.R. Matt, Moose, Mikey, and yep. Danny. That's right, and uh, I mean, but they look. They're losing Blake Snell. They're losing Michael Walker. They're losing Seth Lugo. What's the status? Do you know the status? I'm going to ask you the status of Hugh Darvish. Now, do you know the status of Hugh Darvish? No. Well, I gave you a chance to look it up. When? Uh, just now. I was paying attention to the chat room. I wasn't uh, even listening okay. to you. So what? Am I supposed to be half of this podcast? I'll look it up now. I got it. Okay, good. What status do you mean? He's got an injured what elbow. What status? Does, do well, I do mean? you want his contract status no, or his injury look, status? He, he's 37. He's been shut down for the rest of the season. That was in year. September 12th. That was last year. It says and, he'll be ready to come back February 1st. Yeah, that's what he says. So what's the point? Well, so let's say Hugh Darvish. He'll be ready to come back uh, to start and the And what's season. the point of bringing him up? To bring him up because they're talking about San Diego. Right. They can't and the get Padres you... don't have any pitching. That's the point. Right. And, uh, and look, and the so Yankees, they're going to do what? The Yankees are not shying away because of prospects. He's a very important player. The Yankees will do whatever it takes. The Mets might do whatever it takes. You can't just say that they just dropped out. It's just but look when you have Snell, who's gone, Waka, Lugo, and uh, a Darvish. Maybe I don't know. San Diego's got to make some. San Diego has to make some deals. And the only thing there is to talk about are the deals and the free agents. So that's basically what we are going 
going to try to tell you. Okay, free agent reliever you. Joe Kelly and the Dodgers are very close to an agreement, Danny. According to sources familiar with the situation, I can't take it anymore. All indications are that a deal will, will get done. I'm sure it will. The Dodgers declined his uh, $9.5 million club option this offseason, but it looks like they're still going to retain him. He's 35 now. Uh, he's clearly not going to get $9.5 million at hit this rate. His ERA last year was 412 with a 119 whip in 39 and a third innings. His numbers actually significantly improved once he was traded to the uh, Dodgers from the White Sox. Once you get out of White Sox hell, he pitched 1.74 ERA and a .87 whip in 10 and a third innings for the Dodgers from July 1st on. So he's just, he's not going to get saves. He's not a fantasy relevant, but... He's he, gonna. He he's could gonna, be you, useful. Yeah. He's got terrific. I'll tell you, terrific he pitched numbers. better with the Dodgers. I'll give you some good numbers, and this is hard to believe. And you know what OPS stands for? Yes, it's on base percentage plus slugging. Right, a hitter's OPS is. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. guys like Kyle Schwarber, their OPS is is good Kyle. because he hits a hell of a lot of home runs and he gets on base, but he stinks striking okay. out. It's Shiro Suzuki. In 2007, had a 351 batting average and a 122 OPS plus. Now that in itself means absolutely bulldinky. Kyle Schwaber last year had a 197 batting average compared to 351 to a, a Suzuki, and also the same OPS plus of 122. So it's just one of those things that uh, it just that stares you in the face. And also, I was reading something about Matt Olson. What a year he had! He hit fifty four home runs in two thousand twenty three. Yes. How many pitchers do you think he faced? Three hundred nineteen. Oh come on! Would you do look that what up? What do you think? I'm going to guess. It's on our note. Babe, it's right in front of our faces. Babe Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> Hit 60 home runs in 1927, and he faced 64 pitchers. Yes, yeah, so compared to 319. Yeah, so Matt Olson faced 319 pitchers and hit 54 home runs. In 1927, Babe Ruth faced 64 pitchers and hit 60 homers. Right, that's a good tidbit. Okay. That's why I repeated it. Later. That's terrific. You talked about Joe Kelly at the beginning of the podcast, you know, because we include relief pitchers. There are some leagues where it's very valuable to have a Joe Kelly and very valuable to have Robert Stevenson as the bullpen market has begun to move more and more rapidly. Baltimore looking to get two pitchers, two bullpen pitchers, and one could be Josh Hader. That's what they're talking about. But Robert Stevenson uh, is an impact arm. Is he an impact arm? I said he is. Well, he blew five saves last year, and he okay. only was good on one save. He he accomplished one save, and he blew five. I don't know. Obviously, if if the Orioles are looking at this guy to be an impact arm with Batista gone, is Batista going to be gone next year? Is he? Is he? Let me just look real quick at this. I think this tidbit is old. Yeah, well, he it says he's coming back 2-1. Yeah, okay. So he should be back ready. He had Tommy John surgery October 9th. He's, how could they, oh, 2025. He's going to be out all next year. Yes, he is. So if this is the case, that this person thinks that the Orioles are showing interest in Robert Stevenson because of Batista's absence, I mean, this guy is not a save ca- candidate at all. He's, he was okay. He had pretty good. With the Rays, he was pretty good. But as a bullpen guy, and they say, well, he didn't get saves because Fair, Fairbanks was there. Well, yeah. that's a bunch of bulldinky. This guy can't c- get it done. Well, anyway, in 1927, only Lenny was at the game. Yes, I was at the game. Okay. So there's a question about Soto in the chat room. About how, Of course, Danny wants to know how much people are paying for Soto. And I just I was thinking to myself... 
is this is I want to know if you're do you plan on deciding that once because Soto's is well, he going to enter the season as a Padres? They have till the trade deadline. He's a deadline. 35, 36, 37 dollar player. And you can't make that decision really until... Look, no matter what team he winds up on, Soto is a special player. Absolutely. So depending on your league, he's right up there in the 30s because he is Because he can hit homers even in San Francisco. He's a player for fantasy baseball. Okay, so there's your answer there. It doesn't matter where Soto goes. In our opinion, he is what he is no matter where he goes. There's some players that it just doesn't matter. Soto is definitely going to have a great... On base, on and batting average. Yes. So you know Soto's going to go to a team that needs hitting. You know that the <laughs> Yankees, the Mets, and the Dodgers are mm-hmm. all needing credible starters. Okay? The Yankees, the Mets, and the Dodgers, they all need starters. The Mets are in a phase, a sort of a rebuild, but when you have... Rebuild is totally different when you have Steve Cohen. Who's ready to rebuild? Yeah, where's Laura? Okay, is Laura here. Laura was here before. Laura. Okay, here. she's okay. my fe- she's my fellow Met. She's yes. our she's our Met insider resident okay. chat person. That's right. So uh, he was all set to go, and the Yankees and the Dodgers pitching staff moored by injuries and free agencies. The question is, Yashinobu Yamamoto, will it come down to? To just two teams now. Every team was talking about him. And getting back to what we said, do you really believe a team is calling up a writer and saying we're not interested in Yamamoto? I mean, the Mets, the Dodgers, the Yankees, is there any team, as the Yankees said, we're not interested? Have the Mets said we're not interested? Have the Dodgers? No, they're all interested. Okay, all it's in Yamamoto, who could be, he's being built... He's being built up to be a very good player. But the key to this podcast and any other podcast is we don't know where he's going. But we do think that there's a pretty good chance he'll be going to the Mets, the Yankees, or the Dodgers. All right. We got some news. Some positive Buxton news. Uh, Let's have the... not positive. Come on. Hold on. You're saying positive Buxton news? I'm going to crush you. Go ahead. Yes, positive Buxton news. Don't touch me. Ooh. That was an accident. <laughs> I'm really mean today. Uh, you're a bitch. <laughs> so let's call it like it is. Uh, a bitch is a bitch is a bitch. Like a rookie is a rookie is a rookie. <laughs> he tells me earlier, okay? He tells me earlier that if I don't want to do the show with him, if I want to get in the, if I want to get in the car and just drive somewhere for an hour, he'll yeah. understand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on, everybody. Hope you're enjoying this podcast (laughs) because it's Sunday morning. We wake up at 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning to prepare, and this is what we come up with. (laughs) I hope you're enjoying it, Rotorius and everybody else. And J.R. Matz makes it into the chat room, and we love you. He has Soto for $51 in his only keeper league. Yeah, all right. Well, we were talking about Byron Bucks. All right, so the reports... Positive to say. There's a there's a name behind this source, okay? So we and we have a very credible name behind this source, um, Lavelle E. Neal three of Star Tribune reports that Buxton is fully recovered from arthroscopic knee surgery he underwent back in October. Considerable news, right? Since Buxton's struggles were in were. Apparent, right? But and, and that's the uh, Minnesota beat writer Lavelle Neal, the three. beat writer Lavelle Neal the third. The third. That's three. Come on. Well, but um, knowing that, let me does see, that change your outlook on Byron Buxton? This guy could be an absolute rock star, dude, for fantasy. Nobody's going to argue with me on that. When the guy is healthy, I mean, if he could just. Famous last words, right? If he could just stay healthy. But let's see what happens. He got his knee fixed. Maybe he won't have his knee hurting again. It'll probably be his toe. He'll probably stub it trying to steal a base. Or he'll run into the wall because he still likes to do that. Even at his old age. 
Anyway, he's also great defensively, and I don't know who the Twins have to replace him if he doesn't play, but let me tell you what he did. with In the last three seasons, not including 2023, okay, because he was out most of the year, but between 2020 and 2022, he hit 257 with a 317 on base percentage, 144 weighted runs, created plus with 60 homers and a 9.3 war in 771 plate appearances. Now that's not, that's, it sounds great, but seriously, he's in the last three seasons before this last year, he barely had enough plate appearances to be one full season. How much are you paying for Buxton? See, last year he went 87th overall. 80, okay. No, 87 ADP. Are you going to try to get Buxton? I'm explaining to you what... You need to listen. Good. His ADP fluctuates every year. And yes, I am willing to put this man on my roster if he goes... Deep enough into the draft. I'm not going to draft him 87th overall, but guaranteed this guy is going to go in like the 200s, okay? Which makes it from round 10 to round 20. Now, you have to, if you're a smart player in fantasy, there has to be a point at which you say to yourself, let me put him on my roster because the ceiling, you can't tell me that you're all hyped up on the ceiling for these young players, but you won't draft a guy like Buxton if he falls to a certain point in the draft. This guy has already proven he could do it, which is unlike most of these youngsters that people love to talk about their ceiling. No, you want to talk about a ceiling guy, Buxton shatters them all if he could be healthy, which, by the way, I don't believe he will. So are you drafting but him at all? as I said That's before. That's all I want to know. Are you going to put down a couple of dollars on bucks? Yes. That's it. All right. No, I haven't had my I haven't had my fill. And Buxton, I get it, dude. He's on some of your do not draft ever again list. I have no problem with that. But I I don't know what. I guess I'm a glutton for punishment with this guy. Okay. Let's talk about the uh, trades and trade possibilities. Uh, And of course, I've talked about the Cardinals. They've already made. Deals. They've already drafted. Uh, they've already acquired three pitchers, but they need offense. Tyler O'Neill and I'll, I'll it's talk- funny. He was just brought up in the chat room. Oh, he was. Yeah, they're comparing him to Buxton. They're saying, "Is Tyler O'Neill a cheaper version of Buxton?" No, that's J.R. Matz. Okay, he's a cheaper. Well, and st- Buxton can steal more bases. Buxton, uh, Tyler O'Neill is pretty. Uh, uh, hard to take. One of the things that the Cardinals have done is is that they have. Uh, I mean, O'Neill looked like a budding star. Does O'Neill ever steal any bases? He had thirty four home runs, eighty RBIs. He had fifteen stolen bases, where he finished eighth in the National League MVP. In twenty twenty one, he did. In twenty twenty one, so he can't no, do it. No, this guy does not have the ceiling that Buxton no, does. He does not have it. And but, O'Neill had a terrible year. And uh, who's the other guy? Carlson, another terrible year. So I'm looking. They should have traded him last year. But they're trading him coming off, putting him on the market, coming off a terrible year. Yeah. That's not when you trade a guy. But the they, Cardinals trying to, you know, get some some uh, home runs uh, being hit. So O'Neill did look like a star in the making. He has hit just two twenty nine in 168 games. He's battled injuries. He's now entering his final season of arbitration eligibility. That's the key right there. He's arbitration eligible through 2024, so he gets paid what he's worth from last year. And the fact that he had such a crappy year is going to make sure that he doesn't get paid very much, right, in arbitration. And so maybe teams will be interested. I do think that clearly the Cardinals for several years now have had a logjam in their outfield, and they've done nothing about it except for give guys no opportunity. And even though Dylan... Dylan Carlson is not actually taking advantages of the few opportunities that he's had. 
he still has not had every day a bat and he hasn't been given a good enough try. They expected a ton out of this kid when he first came up and then they just threw him to the side, which is not like the Cardinals at all, but they're doing it with their outfielders. And so Tyler O'Neill injured all season last year. I don't even, I had him on a team. I will never draft him again. Maybe that's why I can't compare him to Buxton because Buxton has not caused me the anger that Tyler O'Neill has. Okay. And frustration. Yes. Okay. He had one good season. And I mean, look, if we're talking one good season, you could probably pin that on Buxton too. If he ever even had a full season, I don't know. But if he ever does, it's going to be magical. No. Talk about a full season. Manny Margot. What? Which, yeah. which number is that? Yeah, it's, uh, well, you know what? We've talked about Oh, O'Neal. Tyler O'Neill. Tyler O'Neill. Manny Margot, who is entering his second season of a two-year, $19 million deal. Uh, I don't, you know, Margot's been rumored to be traded by a lot of teams. And I don't think... Uh, I don't think he's a Is player. Is he worth twelve become... million dollars in one year? I don't know. Only don't Tyler know. Glass now and Zach Eflin are more are projected to earn more during the twenty twenty four season for the Rays. Now that's two pitchers, obviously, but Margot is the highest paid position player and they're gonna try to trade this guy. He hasn't really done very much. Four home runs last year in ninety nine games. 38 RBIs and 39 runs. Is he still... His biggest quality was his speed. Is, yeah, is he stealing bases? He's stealing bases, but he's not a full-time player. He's 29 player. now. Not a full-time player. So many more go. We expect him to be traded. Uh, the Yankees... Nobody's going to take him on. I agree. Oh, the Yankees, of course, right? Because we just throw him to the I Yankees. When, it, when in doubt, throw him to the Yankees. Throw him to the Yankees. <laughs> or the Dodgers. <laughs> I, I know we were talking about Manny Soraka, but he was already traded to Michael the... Michael is his name. Michael okay. Soraka. He was already traded to the White Sox, so let's move on. Uh, well, what do you think about Mike Soraka? He had a horrible time coming back last year after he tore his Achilles in... Uh, is it, Achilles twice in a row. He just hasn't been healthy, but he did have a good season when he finished for the Atlanta Braves, uh, thirteen and four with a two six eight ERA, a one eleven WHIP, and one hundred forty two strikeouts in one hundred seventy two innings as a twenty one year old rookie in two thousand nineteen. Yeah, now, now then he's been injured ever since. He's on the White Sox now. What do you okay. think? Okay, I. You know what? Again, Daniel Ferrara. This guy, if he falls down far enough, you have to give him a chance. Daniel, I'm not trying to base anything off this guy, okay. but if you're going to have to draft somebody in round 25, I don't know where Soroka is going to go in drafts, but it will be interesting to see because I will keep an eye on him. Good late idea. In draft. All right, let's uh, let's talk about. Um, Dylan Carlson just moved down a little bit. Dylan Carlson. Oh, hey, look at this. What's that? Brewers are signing Jackson Churio to an eight-year, $80 million extension. Yes, we talked about that uh, the other day. I thought you were talking about them trading him. No. He was on the market, but uh, the long-term deal. All I'm saying to you now is that watch this guy in fantasy baseball. Nobody really knows a lot about him. Nobody has spent a lot on him. I wonder, does anybody... Have I don't think anybody does until I mention it. Chirino, uh was not really talked about in the chat room. We mentioned him about what, three, four weeks ago, but until then, he was almost like a non entity. Good morning to Big Al. Big Al is here. Good morning to Big Al. So we talked about Tyler O'Neill, and they got the same thing with Dylan Carlson, who was a top prospect last year. He had a, two, clink, two a years clinker. Ago. And you just, it's hard to trade. When you can trade someone off a great season, fine. 2003, he hit 219, five home runs. Wow. Is contract arbitration eligible till the, till the 26th? What do you think of Dylan Carlson? Okay. 
he's arbitration eligible through 2026, okay? That he's only 24 years old. This yeah. guy is not over. There's three remaining years of club control. He's clearly not going to get paid a ton of money because he hasn't been good, but I sure wish they'd give him a chance. I'm not telling fantasy owners to try him out or anything like that. But if you were one of those guys that was like, oh, Dylan Carlson, he's the next Babe Ruth, like that kind of stuff was happening strongly. And oh, it yes. happens all the time. And, and then you immediately kick this guy to the curb because he doesn't, obviously, I'm not recommending people draft him because he isn't <laughs> i would kick him to the curb too in but fantasy. that's when you make trades when they're at the top of their game not when they're at the bottom of their game well with like, dylan carlson it was before he ever started his game yeah well a lot of these guys end up that way pretty much so anyways who's next uh Washington's got a good relief. How about pitcher. Hunter Harvey? How about Kyle Finnegan? Let's let's hit Kyle Finnegan. Okay, then we'll do Harvey. Okay. Uh, Six, uh, go ahead. Tell us stats from last year. Whatever you want. That's how we should do it. It's all yours. You say the name and I'll say the stats go for ahead. last year. 67 games, 28 saves for Kyle Finnegan, 8 holds, his ERA quite high for a closer, three seven six ERA, but he's got and his a whip great, sucks. He's got a great fastball, about ninety seven miles per hour. He's got a swing and miss. Too splitter. many can't get it over the plate. Uh, well, okay, Finnegan has been a bright spot at the back end of the Washington bullpen. Yes, he made his debut when uh, a long two, time ago, dude. No, two thousand twenty. He's thirty two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's 32 years old. He has a 3-5 ERA and just over 200. And he did make his debut in 20. Okay, just over 220-something innings. Uh, he's converted. Here's the exciting part. He has converted 50 saves and 67 chances during his career. So for those of you who uh, want to be, uh, get a closer but don't want to spend a lot, his salary is projected to spike from 2.3 to 5.1. So I know they're going to try to trade him. I'll tell you what, that. What, they can't afford him, the Nationals? Oh, what they, is their whole their whole payroll is probably like $25 million. Well, whatever it is, they would, they would like to trade a $5, 6000000 million pitcher, uh, and they have somebody to replace him. Who, Hunter Harvey? Hunter Harvey. Well, then he might get him. traded, too. He's arbitration eligible through 2025. 57 games last year, 10 saves. He's capable of saving games. All right? I really, I mean, look, his ERA is a whole point lower than Finnegan, and I know he didn't get as many saves, but he's a better pitcher than this 32-year-old rookie of Finnegan. He was a top 100 <laughs> prospect. He was a number two, uh, what, number 22 overall pick in 2013 draft. Uh, he began his pro career in the Baltimore Orioles organization, and they could use him right now. But he's had a lot of injuries. Hunter Harvey... His development was delayed uh, when he started his career, yeah. but he, he has now found a home in the Nationals' bullpen with a 2.7 ERA, 1.02 whip, 10 strikeouts for every nine innings, and 95 appearances. And that, my friends, covers two years. Yes, I would love Harvey if he if they get rid of Finnegan, but as of now Harvey is behind Finnegan for saves. Yeah, all right. Well, you like Brandon Drury? I don't know. I don't know. The Drury. Angels look, the Angels they they don't know what's going on with Otani. They don't know what's going on with their team, okay? Brandon Drury. He had a great season, okay, in 2022. He had a great oh, he did, season. Huh? Okay. And last year he hit 26 home runs, but there's nothing wrong with Brandon Drury, dude. He's oh. actually pretty good. They owe him one year, $8.5 million on his contract. And if he's traded, he may even be worth more. With the Angels potentially headed for a... <laughs> you got an itch? <laughs> I'm so <laughs> she's staring me down. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. With the Angels potentially headed for a transition year with Shohei Otani, who is uh, poised to depart. Uh, she was scratching herself, and I just uh, I shouldn't go there. All right? I should comment every time you scratch yourself. All right, Drew, right? Drew, should I? 
please. <laughs> Drury would be an easy veteran to p uh, <laughs> if they opted to retool, but for fantasy wise, Helena wise, Merrill, Gallo. Good morning to you too. Good morning to everybody. I mean, fantasy wise, is that is he an option, or do you just forget about him? Who? Drury, Brandon. No, Drury. you don't forget about Drury. He's excellent. He's an infielder. He hits 25 homers every year. His on-base percentage is over 300. If that is the case, then you got to say, for an infielder, he's good. All right, let's do a couple he more. Stinks. As we're talking about trade potential. If he gets in the lineup on another team with people that I can actually hit, he might even be better. You got two situations in the next week. You got trade candidates and you got free agent candidates, and that's what we're covering. Jorge Polanco. Jorge Polanco. He's got club options in 2024 and 2025, but the emergence of rookie Edward Julian as the second baseman for the Twins, interesting decision. They're going to have to trade Jorge Polanco. Well, they don't have to trade him. They have a club option for this coming season, ten point five million. Did they exercise that option? I don't know. I don't. Let me just check. But he has spent his entire ten year career with the Twins, and when he's healthy, he's a pretty good offensive second baseman. All right, pretty good. Thirty three home runs, yes. ninety eight RBIs to his credit in two thousand twenty one. Uh, and wow, they must think he's worth something. They exercised their ten point five million dollar club option for next season. Yeah. Even though he missed significant time last year with ankle, knee, hamstring issues, he still had a seven eighty nine OPS with fourteen home runs in eighty games. I don't know why they would exercise that option and then trade him. He plays second base and third base. Uh so we're looking at players. And you're right, Edward Julian is coming up right yes. behind him, but they must not feel that he's ready because they wouldn't have exercised that option. He Edward Julian is ready. He hit two sixty three with sixteen homers in the majors last year. Okay. So why is he why would look well, at all of his stats too? This got, Julian cat is good. Yeah, they got a lot of things to trade, but I think they're gonna trade Polanco because other teams know he's He's pretty good as well. They don't and have room for both these guys. I don't, and that's right. I don't think they're good enough where they can carry. So they both. think it's worth paying ten and a half million to Polanco and then trading him for a couple of youngsters, something like that. Let's go a couple more. We get five. We'll do another five minutes here. Uh, Danny Jansen is going to be traded. Uh, what? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Yeah, I mean, they traded Gabriel Marino and Lourdes Gurriel to the Arizona Dimebacks in exchange for Dalton Varsho, but and they may do it again. They really believe that Alejandro Kirk... Yes, he's good. ...is a clear-cut starting catcher in Toronto. Yes, Lee's okay. Leaves Jansen is a part-time player with the ability to produce at a starting level... That's the kind of player that you trade. Well, he was pretty good last year. He's only, you know, he's young, right? He's still like. Well, how old is he? Uh, he's in arbitration still, so he must be somewhat he's young. He's 28. Arbitration mm -hmm. eligible through this coming season. He's 28 years old. Okay, and he had a great season last year. 750 plate appearances, okay. And 43 uh, homers over the past three seasons. And. He could be a very, I mean, he could be a very good catcher for a number of teams. Yes. And Toronto is in a situation where they can trade him, and I think they will. I do, too. One more player, and then we'll continue this later. Don't forget, all week, this is all you're going to hear about. And here's a player who nobody knows if he's any good. I it's like Max him. Kepler. I hope he does better this year. Kepler wrapped up his five-year, $32 million contract. He's still controllable for one additional season at ten million. Well, they exercised it. They exercised the ten million. Yep. So okay. he's getting paid ten million this year, and he really didn't have a bad season last year. It was, but he struggles to stay healthy. He's okay. 
he hit 260 with 24 homers, 66 RBIs, and he that is one of his statistically best seasons since 2019. Yep, and the Twins could listen to offers for... This guy Cap- hits the ball really hard. Yeah, Matt Wolner, Trevor Lornich are making it very interesting to see if they can hold on for Max What Cutler. about Verdugo? Okay, first of all, I okay. wish King Hap was here. He would tell us that he hates Verdugo. Okay, let's have uh, Verdugo as our, last, as our last guy. I don't think Verdugo has hit his peak yet. No. I think he has not broken out the way that he will eventually. I think that he is going to. I don't know if it's going to be with the Red Sox, but King Turd made a joke and said they should trade him to the Yankees. Well, they <laughs> should. And he was the centerpiece of a blockbuster deal that sent Mookie. He bets yes. to the Dodgers prior to 2020. And that's why the Red Sox fans will never like Verdugo. Yeah, well, I'll tell Because you they what. lost Mookie, and he, they had to suffer through him. Past four seasons, he's hit about 280. He's averaging about 14 homers. And with Jaron Duran breaking out and Sedani Rafella ready for extended look, the Red Sox have a crowded outfield Verdugo is the most logical trade candidate. He could be the centerpiece in a deal uh, to upgrade the rotation. Also, Dahlbeck is up for trade, I think. Bobby Dahlbeck, the guy who stands, he's Adam Dunn Jr. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Bobby Dahlbeck, he could be traded as well. Uh, He closed 2021 on a high note. Many thought he was on his way for a big 2022, but it never it never happened. He struggled to make contact, and against righties, he uh, he struggled so much they devoted him to AAA, demoted him, not devoted him. Okay. So, so J.R. Matz's fan, wonderful family. Yes. Okay, made a bracket of 16 Christmas movies to watch, and they're going to do a March Madness style bracket with the movies to determine a Christmas movie champion. They did it last year with Christmas songs. I'd like to know what song you guys picked for your for your bracket. Luckily, there's an odd number of you in your family, so you can always have a winner, right? Okay, well, keep us posted, and everybody have a very Merry Christmas, and the whole deal will be. We're not missing a day. What about tomorrow? Maybe you could talk about the Rule 5, guys. King Turd wants to know if there's anybody of note in the Rule 5. Okay, is King Turd here? Yes, he's Oh, he is, okay. So anyway, we want to thank everybody for making it possible Don't forget, you guys support us, and it's the only way we can keep going. Chris from Cambridge, Big Al, Chris Gallo, Daniel Ferrara, Danny Fuller, the captain. You got Eddie Heckman, J.R. Matz, Laura. You got Leonard Donaldson, Mal Pal, Tommy Johnson, Triple Play, Boston Paul, S.M. King Turd. We love you all, and uh, we had the Harchin boys here before. I believe, and uh, whatever it is, happy holidays to everybody. Let's have some fun, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Lenny's a Grinch. Grinch is in the mix. What's your favorite Christmas movie, Leonard? My favorite Christmas movie? Miracle on 34th? That's a good one. Uh, No, I like them all, but uh, I don't know. You don't know any. That's why you can't say, right? How about Snoopy? Speak it's to you tomorrow, Christmas. everybody. We'll be back at 9 o'clock talking about... How about Christmas Vacation? That's yeah, a good that, that's one. That's very good, too. That's okay. a fun one, right? Anything with what's-his-name? Laura uh, likes A Christmas Carol. Yeah, that's a good one. Anything but what? Oh, who's the guy? Uh, um, Chevy Chase. Anything with Chevy Chase... Is pretty good, right? ...is my favorite movie. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you.